Now, like a lot of people over the last year or so, uh, we did a crazy thing, my girlfriend and I. We got a pet, a dog, uh, and may I say, if you're thinking about getting one, don't. Um, <laughs> now, nah, get one that's already trained. We had to train this thing. And, and when it was a puppy, it'd go down the street and it'd just keep picking up cigarette butts. And uh, I mean, at one point, the dog was on three packets a day. <laughs> And we lived in an apartment and we had to get some, uh, some grass in, some, some fake, fake grass and, uh, and turf in for the dog to do his business on. And uh, you know how hard it was during the last few years to get grass on the coast? <laughs> All right, there are some people from different areas we know now. Uh, <laughs> And then he's interrupting all the time too. Whenever you're doing something, he just wants to be there and he wants to interrupt you. And, and even when we've got intimate moments, he just comes on in and looks. <laughs> and I know what he's thinking too. He's thinking, ah, that's my style. <laughs> we got a big show for you. Joey Moore will be on and Steve Lamarquan coming up soon. It's The Coast Show with Darren Sanders. Tonight, actor Steve Lamarquan, voiceover artist Joey Moore, plus your chance to win on The Coast Show Wheel. And now, coming to you from the entertainment capital of Australia, it's The Coast Show. My first guest has uh, been around the Australian film industry for so long, I'm, I'm guessing he's probably now a character actor, but I might ask him that when he comes out. Please welcome Steve Lamarquan. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, look, you're on a show we did many moons ago, which is... Uh, this is much better, isn't it, here, than the one we it's did last time? Substantially better, mate. I know. It's just like... imagine how bad it was last time. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming on. Am I very pleased? Yeah. Good. Yeah. So, it's great. This is a great setup. No. And congratulations too, by the way, Darren. It's Thanks. fantastic, mate. It's great to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Good. It's nice to have you here. Um, as an actor, because I, I dabble sometimes in the acting thing. You know, I have an agent every now and then. You're a they, dabbler. Yeah, yeah, they give you these call outs to do things and that. And commercials. I, do you like auditioning for commercials? or? I don't do it anymore. No? Unless it's over 30,000, I won't do it because it's just not worth it. Well, it's not because when I came out of acting school, which is 1992, if you did an advertisement, uh, TV commercial, for 12 months, you'd get paid. Oh, between fifteen to twenty thousand dollars. These days, for the same amount of work, you get paid half of that. So it's actually gone. It's decreased by fifty percent over the last 20, 25 years. So yeah, it's, it's yeah. not worth it because they're all. You know, they know. They know that there's always an actor who will do it for this price. Yeah. And so they actors tend to undercut. And yeah. so we yeah, don't there's get paid a lot with. of that in the whole um, world. industry. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, there yeah, is absolutely. Yeah. But this industry is rife for it, and, and, and yeah. actors as a rule are getting paid less in real terms than they were twenty years ago. But your so, your first TV commercial you did didn't really last that long, did it? About twenty four hours. Yeah. That's right. It was for um, Arnott's Ruffles. It was a, a, a chips ad for Arnott's Ruffles. And I played, uh, I think, Peter, one of the apostles. Yeah. So we're at the, uh, the, 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 the Last Supper, of course. So there's, there's 12 of us along a table, all sitting there, twiddling our thumbs, waiting for Jesus to turn up. He doesn't arrive. He's forgotten. He's got another date or something. He's off to see Mary or something, I think, Mary Magdalene. And so, so I was like, no problem. And I reached in my bag and I pull out a big pack of 12 pack of Arnott's Ruffles. So I hand out a pack of ruffles to everyone, so we all eat the Arnott's ruffles instead of the Last Supper. And within 24 hours, uh, a lot of Christians had rung up and said, yeah, no. <laughs> Get it off air. So that, that was a, an illustrious start to my career, so 24 hours. Yeah. Did you have to grow beards for parts or...? No, it's just laziness. Oh, OK. Nice, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, actually, uh, you know Heath Davis? I was in a, his yeah. film called Broke a yeah. couple of years ago. Um, I'm in his next film where it's called Chris Mess. Yeah. And I'm actually playing an actor who's down on his luck. And so he has to get a job as a uh, supermarket Santa Claus, a shopping centre Santa Claus. So I've obviously got the beard for it. So I'm sort of growing it out at this stage to see if it's uh, long enough for when we get there. You'd have a nice grey beard too. I reckon. No, yeah, it, it takes a while to come through. The problem with my beard... I shaved it's... yesterday, just in case you're wondering. So okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it, it gets to a point where it's all right, but what happens is because it's grey, I've got a, a dark bit here. As it's growing, it just looks like I've got a little... 
Hitler moustache. <laughs> Mate, I actually have this little black, you can't really see it here, but it's just this little black oh, yeah. just across there. Yeah. So it's also a bit like a, um, a not a Hitler, who, who no. had that really thin little mower along there, like a yeah. Omar Sharif or someone. You yeah, know, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like, or, or Dick Dastardly. That's right, exactly, uh -huh. exactly. Who yeah, yeah, isn't yeah. a real person, of course, as a cartoon character, but we get like point. myself. That's yeah. right. What is a character actor? I've got no idea. <laughs> Me either, that's why I said it. But look, no, you, you, I, I have think you've been... got that look now. You've got this look where it's a bit more hard. What's the opposite? What is If you're not a character actor, what are you? Yeah, well, what are you? Just a, an actor or a character, or yeah. I don't know. I, I don't understand if you're not a character actor. I mean, every time you act, you're playing a character. Mm. So if you're not a character actor, what kind of actor are you? I, I, I think the distinction is that if you're not a character actor, you're actually a leading man. Do you know what I mean? No, and look, no. I've been the lead in a few films. I find it pretty boring. Um, the bad guys always have a lot more fun. Mm. Uh, so I tend to um, not try to be the lead, if, if that makes sense. But I, which makes me a character actor, but. I don't know. I mean, but like you I, say, I the, the bad ones. You, you are. You, you're a baddie in a, most of the things you're in. I used to work at uh, Old Sydney Town, and the guys that I worked with they used to call me Baddie Spunk, um, as in I, kind of okay looking guy. Yeah. But I, they they say that, not me, just to say that you know. What I mean? But always playing baddies. So mm. they used to call me Baddie Spunk. That was my 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 nickname for a long time was Baddie Spunk. And I think I've always enjoyed, as Hoffman himself said, that you always have a lot more fun playing the bad guys. Um, and I've made a pretty much a career out of playing a lot of bad guys, um, and yeah. I, I enjoy that thoroughly. I really mm. do. You, you get to get to mess with people's heads. Um, one of the tricks of playing bad guys is you try to make him likable. Uh, so if you make a likable guy who's really doing nasty things, then people sort of go, well, I don't really know where I'm at with this guy. So mm. that tends to work as well. Now, uh, uh, you're not wearing tights, are you? No, I'm just wearing <laughs> tight jeans. These are quite new oh, jeans, right, actually. Okay, so yeah. they, what, they look a bit tight, do they? No, otherwise you would sort of... It doesn't look too bad. Yeah. Yeah. Bit tight, but, 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 you so fixed the lighting problem on the show yeah. anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, just, they, were, they, were, they were very... Uh, they're definitely they're jeans, big. mate. Yeah. They're brand new. Bought yeah. them last week at Jeans, jeans West, I believe. Um, I've got uh, $92 for two pair. It's a sale <laughs> on now. Don't miss out. Every time a guest mentions somebody, we should just beep them out. I think so. You'll yeah. be able to and the then they'll be like, oh, yeah. 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 yeah, we'll be able to be like, oh, what, who was that? What, what did he say? Was, was that, that Jeans sponsor? West or just Jeans? I don't so know. It's, it's it. And we'll give him a text number. And if you yeah. text you this number with uh, $80, then we'll, like, we'll tell you who it was. So, yeah, that's right. Yeah. I like this idea. Ooh, that's good. 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 That's what COVID does. It <laughs> think about right. ideas to, to <laughs> down the track. Um, well, are you enjoying that beverage? I am indeed. It's a, one of the nicest coffees I've ever had. It's a Kosho coffee. It's delightful. Yeah. Nice mugs. You got these made up for the show, did you? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah uh, I got that. I got them from. Oh yeah, the um. <laughs> text eighty dollars to this number on your screen. <laughs> oh, good. I like it. It's working already. It's brilliant. Hey. Very good. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Good. 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 Uh, do they still have the late night ads where you call one eight hundred? Something? I, I don't know. I'm a sucker for yeah. buying stuff on late line TV. No. Uh, the house is littered with um, Ab King Pros, um, different weight machines and, you know, Pilates machines and that. You get me in front of the TV at two o'clock in the morning yeah. and I've had a couple of these and a couple of those. I'm like, how can I live without that? I get two. I get to get on the phone. I tell you, the house is littered with shit that I buy at two o'clock in the morning. It's outrageous. So, yeah, my poor wife. <laughs> Set up a market stall somewhere. <laughs> exactly. Um, that's why I've got a lot to sell. So, yeah. Have you ever, ever, like you just said, being on the, uh, I didn't mean to point at your drink then. That's fine, mate. I'll have a sip. Uh, but being, being on the drink uh, you know, changes you a bit, doesn't it? You, what crazy antics do you usually get up? Are you, are you, are you a happy drunk? Um, oh, it depends what kind of mood I'm in, I suppose. Yeah, um, yeah pretty much so. Look, I've done some pretty stupid things on, on the booze, as most of us had. Um, I once stole a wheelchair, actually, um, <laughs> from a hospital. Oh, right, not from somebody go, hey, mate, get out. And... <laughs> <laughs> no, um, no, 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 no. I was at the pub. Tell you the story? Yep. Okay, okay. Walking home from the pub, had a few. Um, this is the Royal Prince Alfred Hospital in uh, Missenden Road up in um, Camperdown. So it's on the top of a very steep hill. Came out of the pub, walked up the hill, about two, 300 metres, a bit wobbly, saw a window, a door open, light coming out. I'll go and see what's in there, in a bit of an adventure. Walked in, 12 wheelchairs just sitting there, all folded up. I went, I'll get one, unfolded it, jumped in, went down the, uh, down the little ramp. Down on Missenden Road, so as I say, back down about, about 100, 200 metres down to Parramatta Road. Screaming down, just gravity doing a job over the, you know, the, the harm sitting around, you know, the, the, the telegraph poles and up and down and having a great old time. Oh, this is fantastic, go, 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 go. Got down to Parramatta Road, down the bottom of the road and pressed the button, beep, 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 boop, across the road. Got to the other side and there's a little pram ramp there. 
trying to get myself up, and because I'm a heavy bastard, the wheels are just spinning on themselves, so I couldn't <laughs> actually get myself up the pram ramp. I was about to jump out and just push it up, and I heard, heard this behind me. You okay there, mate? Oh, turn around. Cop car. So, and there's a, a young fella's got his head out the, out the window going, you are right there, mate? And I said, oh, I've just got this wheelchair. I'm just coming from the hospital, and I'm just uh, going to visit a, a, a mate, you know? And he goes, hang on, hang on. So he talks to the Sarge and jumps out of the car and goes, Sarge says, I've got to push you back up. And I went, oh, shit. Um, because, yeah, actually, I was, as I was wheeling away, on the back of the wheelchair, it's got R-P-A-H, oh. stenciled on the back. So it was a bit of a giveaway that I was stealing it from the hospital. So he goes, no, nah, hang on, mate. Whoop, 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 whoop. Says R-P-A-H on the back. I've got to push you back up. So he gets me, and then um, the Sarge sort of goes, all right, you push him back up to his ward, and I'll follow you up in the car. <laughs> so he does a right-hander, and the cop starts pushing me. Piss the butt across the Parramatta Road. Back up this hill, so and I'm like, oh fuck! Yeah. So, so the conversation starts. Say, so, what have you do to your knee? Oh, the, 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 the bust my knee playing footy. Oh, who do you play for? Oh, the, 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 the Hills Bulls. All oh, right, what have you done? Oh, it's the the ACX or whatever. I just make up this shit. He's going, all oh, right, okay. So he's pushing me up, and then the Sarge is driving the car up, saying, "Hurry up, Jimmy! Come on, mate! We have a little night." <laughs> so he's like pushing me, going, "Jesus, you're a heavy bastard!" And you know, he's in the middle of summer, he's starting to get a bit of a sweat up, and he just keeps pushing me up. And I, by this stage, I'm going, "I have absolutely no idea where I stole this wheelchair from." <laughs> so he's trying to push me back up to my ward to put me back into the ward, and I just go, "I don't know how far it is. Might have gone past it for all I know." And so we get about halfway up the road, and I've just gone, "Stuff it! It's here! It's, it's this building here." And had a big horseshoe sort of driveway. So he goes, all right, you sure this is it? I said, yeah, just, just get me out of here. Just leave me here and you'll be fine. And uh, he goes, no, I'll have to make sure you get into your ward. And I'm like, oh, I'm sure I'll stay <laughs> So he's pushed me up to the window. And it's, the, the, the whole ward is just completely empty. There's no one in there. And I said, oh, no, I'll be fine. I'll just knock on. This is where I came out of. I'll get back in. And he goes, no, mate, mate, we've got to wait. We've got to... And then the Sarge comes over. He goes, what's going on, Jimmy? He goes, oh, he reckons this is where he got his wheelchair from. But, you know, there's no one in here. I'm like going, oh, God, how do I get out of this? I'm still sitting in my wheelchair. All of a sudden, two security guards arrive out of nowhere. They're going, it's a bit like the, the old cops, hello, 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 what's going on here then? And, like, and so Jimmy goes, oh, this guy was uh, just you know, wheeling across the road, so I pushed him back up, and, and then uh, <laughs> the security guard goes, that's interesting. We just saw this bloke walk up here about 10 minutes ago, a bit wobbly. <laughs> Then we saw him go flying back down the hill on, the, on a wheelchair. <laughs> then we just saw you pushing him back up. <laughs> and this cop, he's, like, he's got out his baton. He's like, Stand up. <laughs> I'm like, dude, I'm in a wheelchair. <laughs> Stand up, mate. And I'm like, I don't know how the hell to get out of this. And so the Sarge just come up to me and he's just gone, Jimmy, stand aside. And he goes, listen, mate, what's your name? And I said, Steve. And he goes... Listen, mate, this is the funniest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> when I say now, you just get up and you run. <laughs> go. I go, get out of there. And that was it. Absolutely gone. So yeah, that's the end of my story. So, yeah. 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 I've got to just reach under here. Look, we, that was pretty much, you know, the quiz for you to get that. So that's your lucky box. You can take that home with you. What is it? Oh, it's, a, it's a gift from the, the show to you. Is it another mug? Yep, sure is. <laughs> um, my God, it looks like rats have been at this. What is it? It's just a mug. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, mate. That's awesome. Thank yeah, you. I know. But... <laughs> and also, from Central Coast, Hampers and Gifts, we've got a gift box for you. So for, for you to... There you go. You can check out Central Coast, Thank Hampers and Gifts. Thank you very much. Gifts. No worries. Now, we haven't... Um... Central Coast. So, there is a company yes. that actually does Hampers and Gifts. Yes. Is that right? That's correct. Great. Should I open it now? Or? You can if you want. We don't even know what's in it. No, I, well, that's why, that's why I was thinking of opening it. Oh, yeah. Because then I oh, we can do. It. Can I hold it up like this? Do you it? can hold it up wherever way you want. Thanks, Darren. All right. It's uh, exciting, this, it isn't is. it? It is. There we go. All right, we've got it. Oh, my God, look at that! Toffee apples. Wow. Ah. Uh, apple and pomegranate vinegar, which is brilliant. This is like late night ad now. If you were watching this... <laughs> smoked almonds. Absolutely. If you are watching this, you'd be like, oh, I want to order two of those. I'm assuming I'd get a little uh, kick on from uh, Central Coast uh, Hampers and Presents. Yes, yes. yes. Enjoy. Yeah, yeah, probably. Okay. Yeah, if you keep yeah. going, this is... Really... Hundreds of thousands. It's a gum nut milk chocolate freckles bark. Oh, can I? Are you giving no, it? Oh. Oh. Thank you. Uh, I'm not allowed to swear, am I? Yeah, you can. And Dukka. Ducker. Oh, you say that? oh, that's good. What I love it? that. Yeah, Ducker. That's Anyone nice. know what Ducker is? Yeah, it's great stuff. Yeah. It's good. It's like a, you put it on your 
Yeah, you, in your, your, you dip it in your, your bread, your bread. No, your bread, oh, you right. dip your bread in olive you oil. Dunk it, you yeah, dunk yeah, it. it's right, beautiful. Cool, yeah. If you don't want any of that, let me know. No, no, it's all mine. Thank all you right, very much. That's that's cool. Amazing. Thank you so much. No, you're welcome. That's great, man. That's brilliant. These guys are good. Yeah, cool. cheers. And well, thanks. Uh, yeah. Shit, cheers. Very good. <laughs> Thanks for coming on the show. We it's appreciate good, it. Pleasure. Thanks for sharing some of your life and your stories with us. My very pleasure. Thank Karen. you again. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's time for the Coast Show Prize Wheel. Tonight, one lucky audience member and one home viewer are in with a chance to win. A $100 gift card to spend at the Queen's Wharf Hotel in Newcastle. Experience the best VR in Australia at CCVR The Entrance with an hour-long virtual reality session. A $100 voucher to enjoy pizza and pasta at Paparotti's Tugra. Two weeks of unlimited classes for you and a friend at Compass Pilates Reformer Studio Long Jetty. Enjoy a show for two at Lazotte's in Lambton. Live and cooking at Lazotte's. A $50 voucher to enjoy breakfast, lunch or dinner at the Entrance Lake House. Salsa your way into a five-week intro to Salsa course for two with Central Coast Salsa, valued at $250. Our lucky prize wheel audience member today, Jess. Welcome, Jess. Thanks, you. <laughs> so much support for Jess here. Jess, where are you from? I'm from the entrance. Sorry to hear. Oh, Listen, to um, <laughs> um, we'll give the wheel a big spin and see what you come up with on the Coast Show Wheel. Oh, look at that. Live and cooking in the Zots. You've got two tickets. That's not bad. Two tickets for you and a friend to go to Lazotte's and also uh, the same prize goes to a lucky home viewer as well. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations, Jess. You and our home viewer have each won show tickets to live and cooking at Lazotte's in Lambton. Check out all of Lazotte's upcoming live shows at lazotte's.com.au. If you'd like to be a home contestant on our prize wheel, be sure to follow and like The Coast Show on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter and subscribe to The Coast Show YouTube channel for details. My next guest, you will no doubt close your eyes and listen to her and think, I've heard her somewhere before. We'll let her tell you all about it. Please welcome Joey Moore. Thank you. Joey, welcome. Hello. Hello. It's the... Uh, I feel very relaxed. It's a very strange introduction, a very strange introduction. <laughs> but, but you are all about the boys now. I've, I've had a, 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 a sort of a very varied career and I started off in Adelaide doing Here's Humphrey. My first job ever in, yeah. when I left school, I, I told you this when I ran into it a, a yeah. gig. I, was on Here's Humphrey. I had to blow up balloons. I was 15. <laughs> I was on work. That was my first ever job so on television cool. was work experience and I still had that call sheet from I then. I know and it yeah. was such a lovely atmosphere too because yeah. it was in the days when you know like you'd start off on the floor blowing up balloons and then you might end up sort of directing. And still not sounding any better <laughs> is it? Yeah. <laughs> so I decided to leave and so I did a children's show in the afternoons which was called um, Channel Niners which was for about 10 years so it was like entertaining kids for Two hours on live TV every day for ten years, and oh, that'd do your head in. Yeah, it? and then they changed the name to Come On Kids because we went national. Oh, that's those a bit days. weird. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! But all that time, I'd sort of still been like, the other love of my life was um, voice voices, yeah. and like you know, just always sort of. Like, I, I just love doing. Um, what um, was your breakthrough mimicking. voice? Did you have like? Oh, yeah, it was like the Happy Joe Happy NRMA. Uh, jobs, which I was um, the gum chewing, um, yeah, but happy Joe, you know, I had to talk like that as a, you know, and you had to do that for three hours. Like, you know, if you were doing characters in those days or voiceovers, you'd stay in a booth for three hours because they couldn't actually record it. They could have just got someone from the coast to done <laughs> <that>. <laughs> <laughs> and I just remember like how like how extraordinarily <laughs> like long those those sessions used to take anyway as it, as it happens nowadays they're like really fast and, and, and they're out. fine yeah but at least I learned how to be consistent yeah. with the voice because if you're not the same at the beginning of your um, of your voiceover as you are at the end then of course you know it's not going to work hmm. so then I um yeah, then I decided to leave um, what's what's Adelaide. the what's the one uh, ad that people may know you from. Oh, before. really? Yeah. Okay, so. Welcome to Optus. The number you have dialed has been disconnected. <laughs> 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 so, you know, and then now I'm... See, 
that's the weirdest reaction uh, ever because, <laughs> no. because usually people are like, ah, oh, what? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, now they'll, they'll listen to those. I oh, know. I never actually knew that yeah. it would be that, that incredibly noticeable. Yeah. You know, um, but I suppose I've been doing it for 20 years. So I guess those things become embedded in the psyche of anyone on the phone. But people do get angry. With well, me. Do they? Yeah, yeah. Uh, your friends? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you mean your mum hold up? I was on hold for nearly an hour and a half of you. Did it put me through? You, yeah. can do that when they, you can do that when they just call you, couldn't you? Yeah, I do. You, you don't want to speak to I've them? I've done that. Yeah. Don't oh. worry. Yeah, yeah, I have. Yeah. <laughs> it's quite good, yeah. You might as well plug your website while you're here. Oh, yeah. Well, it's joeymorevoice.com. But I have my own studio, professional studio at home, which everyone's had to do, of course, during COVID. But I'd started it before that because... I realised that, you know, like running to jobs, like we used to do four and five back in the 80s and 90s a day and you'd have to drive through city, Sydney traffic, find a park, jump out, run into a studio, you know, do your job and sort of do a bit of like a stand-up almost and kind of so people remembered you <laughs> and then like jump back in the car and go to the next one. And it was great fun and we did it with a lot of people, like everyone. There'd be lots of really amazing comedians and, and other great actors that you could actually, you could sort of, you could really sort of feel it's palpable, well, yeah, 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 and you really bounce off each other. But then all of a sudden kind of it, it changed and people were starting to do things from their home studios on their own and it's kind of it's different now mm. but I, I really have loved it because um, I've just found like I understand you know the editing and, the, and I've like you know I've got my business now that I and I, I enjoy doing it and I've finally found the thing that I I love doing and uh, I think it's quite empowering and you can at do this it age in your pajamas. I, I, I could and I have in oh. fact <laughs> in fact. <laughs> I did when I was away recently um, at night. I had, I had to do a really urgent one for Microsoft and um, and I had nowhere else but under the cover with a pillow in the bed because that gives you the fact that you're not, you know, you're not, it's sort of not bouncing around. So I'm in there going, you know, and I sent it off. Um, I did three takes, one with one pillow, one with two pillows, one with a doona, you know, <laughs> and, uh, and the editor came back and said, oh, that was brilliant. It's just, why do we even bother doing it in the studio? And I went, well, I don't think I'd want to stay under a doona for an hour for some of the normal jobs, yeah. It is quite challenging. <laughs> well, yeah, unless you were doing a real yeah, hot yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, I know, yeah. yeah, I know what you're saying. And you're also the voiceover for the wonderful Coast Show now with our prize wheel. I've got to be doing that. <laughs> yeah, the prize wheel. So, yeah, there yeah, you yeah, go. Yeah, so yeah. now yeah. I'll be like, ah, oh, that's where we've heard her. Yeah, because I was obsessed yeah. by Romper Stomper Domper Do. Oh, yeah. Tell me, tell me, tell me, do. And I was at the pub one night and she was there and I was like probably 18 and I fell apart because I heard her order and she said, I'd like a beer, please. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, oh, my God, my God, that's actually her voice, you know. But then later, like, when I when I had my daughter, I can do all these, you know, character voices for her every night, entertain her, so I'd be doing, you know, and the witch said, ah, 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 my pretties. And then then the little, the, the little rabbit said, but, Mummy, I don't know what way to go now. And so, you know, like I would do all of these things. And one night when she was four years of age and I'm doing all these little characters and I'm getting ready to do the witch again because that was my favourite, not hers, mine. <laughs> and she went, Mummy, could you just read it in a normal voice? <laughs> and that's when you kind of realise yeah. that your kids don't really necessarily appreciate your... <laughs> Did you say no? No, I said, yeah. do you realise how much I get paid to do an extra for that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But your daughter now, she's uh, she's yeah quite successful. She's actually a musician. pop punk rock pop, singer. Pop punk rock singer. <laughs> she went completely the other way. I said, "Sure, you don't want to do voiceovers?" And she said, "No, I, I can't be fake like that." <laughs> and you know, and I just went, whoa. <laughs> but I, I think it was just that she was too shy. But then next thing you know, she's sort of like touring the world with her pop punk rock band called Stand Atlantic. They've been quite successful, that's for sure. And they're, you know, like been touring in the States and stuff. So she is actually using her voice. So and you've that's seen, you've seen her live. Um... I have. In fact, once 
um, not too long ago when, oh, uh, what was the name? Uh, Frankie's, one of the venues that she played in, Frankie's in the city. And it's kind of groovy and it's like they sell pizzas but they have bands and that whole thing, you know. And it was the first time I'd actually been able to go to a concert where, uh, you know, where I could kind of enjoy sort of being there and it was like a normal sort of thing. And she, I, someone was saying, I was at the back of the room, someone was saying, oh, your daughter wants you up on stage. And I went, oh, she wants me to sing with her, you know. I'm going, oh, my God, you know. And I get up there and she goes, don't even think you're going to sing. <laughs> and I said, oh, well, what am I doing? And she said, come on, everyone, I want you to get, like, so she asked me to crowd surf. <laughs> and I had never crowd surfed. I just know that you're supposed to jump in. Yeah. And so I jumped in frontwards and you're not, you're supposed to do it oh, on yeah, your back. Yeah. And so, oh, there's this groping sort of going on. Yeah. And, and I'm like, one of my friends was trying to stop my dress from like, I had a dress <laughs> on it. I was just trying to, and, and then at the end of the, like, she just, bought, all I could hear was Bonnie saying, thanks to everyone for not groping my mother. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm never allowed to probably do that again. <laughs> Would have been fun, though, would have been it fun. It really was. It was absolutely sensational. Joey, thank you very much for coming on the show. Really appreciate it's it. It's a pleasure. And being part of the show. That's uh, No, fantastic. thank you for asking me, and thank you very much no for problem. having me here. Joey Moore, everybody, also. <laughs> Please thank Steve McQuand as well. <laughs>